Welcome back. Give me your testimony, sir, while you were up on the rooftop. After the show, I left the push cart in the Rose Garden and came into the embassy. Then, they took a picture of me shaking hands with the ambassador. After that, and until my next appearance, I had some free time, so I wandered around. That's when I spotted the chimney. A chimney like that is a rare thing, you know. So then I wanted to play Santa and decided to give it a try. That's very dumb, but okay. I thought I just finished telling you not to lie anymore. Um, but it's kind of ultra embarrassing. And what exactly is so ultra embarrassing that you can't tell me? Edgy man. I just said it was embarrassing, so of course I can't just blurt it out. So you're just going to have to reason it out for me. As your superior, I command you to hurry up and expose this man's lie. I have every intention to, for I'm not about to let us waste time on such a trifling matter. Uh, I gotta remember what he said. Left the push cart in the Rose Garden, sure. Took a picture, yep, that part's true, I remember that. Free time wandered around, sure. Fine. This part, I don't... He, he did not want to play Santa. He wanted to surprise his girl. Who he didn't realize was not his girl at the time. Hold it! You suddenly wanted to play Santa. Oh, well, actually, I dressed up as Santa once before already. That was down at Gord Lake. I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't dredge up such unnecessary memories for me. <laughs> Sounds like you guys share a lot of history. A perk of being childhood friends. Besides, it's not a felony to dress up and play Santa, you know? Santa doesn't go around killing people after he comes down a family chimney, after all. Actually, is it worth delving into whether or not playing Santa is a big deal? Yes, I will. Actually, I believe in this case, playing Santa is actually quite a big deal. Are you saying that your buddy isn't exactly made of Santa quality stuff? Precisely, you hit the nail on the head, Agent Lang. Edgy, that's so incredibly mean. Tell me something, Larry. Did you know that Santa's job is to deliver presents to people all over the world? Of course I know that. I did graduate from junior high, you know. In that case, it's your turn to tell me something. I want you to tell me whom you were delivering a present to. Um, I was delivering a present to a child not basking in the warm glow of love. That must be the most elegant description of you I've ever heard, but a lie is still a lie. You sure know how to kick a guy when he's down, you know that? In any case, the person you wished to deliver a present to was... Uh... Pardon me, wants to say gumshoe? I mean, it wasn't... It's her, but it's not... Supposed to be her. But no, I don't have an image of his girlfriend. So I guess it's her? Take that! Heh, <laughs> interesting taste you have there, Mr. Suspect. Don't spread lies about me. I totally didn't want to see Miss Oldbag so much that I'd try to go down a chimney. Ow. I advise you to stop right there and you're bashing of a lady. Well, I must admit that I myself hardly ever had the want to run into that lady. However, what if you were misinformed and under the wrong impression? Then what? Define wrong impression. I simply mean that the man before you thought the, to enter the old lady's room without knowing one very important fact. And that fact is best summed up with this. Uh, where the... The ink! Yes. Yep. Take that! This is something the old lady received from her employer for the night. The girl who normally plays the pink princess, Mindy, was it again? It seems that this man is quite taken with that actress. But that's not true, Edgy. She's the one with the hots for me. I just know it. I can feel her sexy beam piercing my heart when she's watching me. 
sexy beam, I tell you. You filthy, despicable, inconsiderate, fickle, idiotic, cowardly, apparition of a man. You haven't matured at all since we last met. Hey, Mr. Prosecutor. Yes? This guy, he's got bigger problems than just getting involved in murders, I take it? I suppose you could put it that way. Hey, what the heck, man? I don't get you guys at all. Why do you all have to make me out to be some sort of bad guy? To return to the original topic, I propose that at least this much has been made clear. Without any knowledge that Miss Mindy had fallen ill, Larry tried to make his way into the Pink Princess's room, that much we know for sure. Hey, Edgy. Looks like I've got the hang of this court thing now. But we're not in court at the moment. Shut up. I see what's going on here, and it looks just like what you do in court. I guess old boy here still has something he'd like to say. Lang Z says, until the root of the tongue dries, one never knows the whole truth. You shouldn't form conclusions until everything is out in the open, which is why I'll listen. All right. Then listen to, then get ready to listen to me defe defeat Edgy in a battle of wits. Larry, have you forgotten that should I lose, your victory prize will be your arrest? <laughs> Take that, Edgy. I was actually came down a chimney to kill a guy. So you think that all I wanted to do was go visit Mindy? Well, I dressed up as Santa and climbed up to the chimney, but the smoke was really thick. Isn't that wrong? Didn't they see the Silver Samurai costume, not a Santa costume? It was a case of mistaken identity, and that mistake made me late for the speech. Then, to top it all off, I became a suspect in a murder. That's what you really meant. Why would I ever put myself through so much humiliation on purpose? Someone say something! Larry, are you seriously trying to submit this, not as a confession, but as a testimony? So what if I am? Is there something wrong with that? My claim is a claim claiming my claim. Do you have a problem with that? So it was you. You're my stalker. But I should warn you, it doesn't matter what kind of flattery you throw at me. I'm the devoted type of woman who's wholly focused on one man. As long as Edgy Poo's alive, I can't just drop him and be unfaithful. No, I can't. Earlier, I was tempted by a tenant. Well, I'm love for Edgy Poo, which I passed. Stay completely true to my beloved. Ah, I'm so inspired. You're such an inconsiderate, cowardly, idiotic, and all-around completely worthless man. I thought I heard something ominous just now, but perhaps it was just my image. Oh, no. Hold on. Oh, man. Something ominous. Uh, as long as Edgy Poo's alive, can't drop him and be unfaithful. I was tempted just by a tiny, whiny bit by that wolf man, which, Zang, I, I, don't, I don't blame you. He, he, he's attractive. Uh, that was a test of my love, which I passed. Rest of eternity. Okay. I believe there is nothing further for me to prove at this point. What do you mean? Well, of course you've still got something to prove. You still have to show some proof that I was trying to meet up with Mindy. Proof, you say? Remember, Reggie? Everything is evidence in court, right? You mean evidence is everything in court, Larry. <laughs> but I understand your point. Yeah, see... I'm totally a pro at this now. Very well, if you wish to see the evidence, then let me show you the last piece of evidence you'll ever wish to see. Uh... So you think I'll... I mean, we do think that. Dress in the smoke, that part we didn't... Well, we don't... The, the Santa part is wrong. They didn't have him as Santa. That part, probably true. That part is definitely true. And then this part, which he's sweating on, so that's probably the part that I need to do something on. Don't I have, like, a letter from him? Hold oh, on. Badge, guide. That's my autograph. Da -da -da -da. Like she knows she has a stalker because she received a stalker. No, yeah. Objection! Larry, don't even think about denying that you have knowledge of this letter. 
Uh, hey, w why are you showing that thing to me? Wendy, I'll be descending on you from above tonight, your loving knight. Well, isn't that just romantic? But you weren't able to descend on her from above, were you, Mr. Loving Knight? Um, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't remember a thing. Objection! I don't know when I decided to give Larry that voice. <laughs> uh, you can pretend to be ignorant all you like, but it's written right here. This letter proves that you were not out to meet the old lady, but rather that you were attempting to pay Miss Mindy a visit. What part of this letter shows that the person... G. Could it be the name Wendy? Take that! Larry, I suggest you take up penmanship lessons. That is, if you never wish to experience this level of embarrassment ever again. Whoa, 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 what the heck? Why are you talking about Speak English? You wrote Mindy so sloppy that it became sloppily that it became Wendy to the average eye. Hey, stop picking on me. It's so embarrassing. <laughs> there, there. Isn't that what childhood friends are for? They're the best, aren't they? For punching? But that will have to wait until we're off this crime scene. Eek, Ed, you saved me from the scary man. Sure, if you're willing to make amends, starting with your incredibly embarrassing mistake. That, that, that wasn't me. Come again? It's a fake. Someone's out to get me, so they made that fake letter. To set me up. Accept your defeat graciously. But you guys are being so mean. Hold it! Penmanship analysis. What's that? That's when you analyze penmanship, my dude. No matter who, all people have certain unique features to their handwriting. Ergo, all we have to do is compare the handwriting in this letter to a sample of yours, and we'll know soon enough who it was that sent this letter. I'll never write another thing in my life. Hold it! Tsk, tsk, tsk. I have an autograph, sir. It's no use, Mr. Loving Knight, for you've already graciously provided me with a sample of your handwriting. Take that! This autograph and our mysterious letter. If we compare the handwriting, we'll know the answer to our question soon enough. G Confess now, Larry, to your miserable failure. I'm sorry. I did it. It was me causing trouble again. I admit it. You hit the nail right on the head, Edgy. So he finally confesses. I saw the pink princess being carried around in a stretcher and I got worried, alright. I wanted to go into Mindy's room, but the doctors wouldn't let me in. So what choice did I have? It was the chimney or bust, Edgy. Your mind jumped from the door to the chimney? What a criminally overactive imagination. Well, at least I was honest and wrote Mindy a letter and stuck it under the door. That way, she wouldn't be so shocked when I came down through the chimney. Except for the fact the letter was an utter failure at conveying said sentiment. I'm really, really sorry. Larry, you may be a shameful, good-for-nothing blight on the face of humanity. Oh my god. However, I always knew you weren't the killer. I told you to trust me, because at the very least, I can attest to that about you. Edgy, your act. We've lost a lot of valuable time because of you. Ow. In any case, I believe we can say that we now know exactly what happened. Mr. Larry Butts sought to climb down the chimney, not for access to the crime scene, but to enter the room of the elderly lady next door. Great job, Mr. Prosecutor. Although I still find it a bit unbelievable that the two are your friends. But the suspicion on that guy over there isn't completely resolved yet, so don't get any funny ideas about running off, okay? Ow. Oh, hey, what? Edgy. What does the wolfman mean when he says, I'm not off the hook yet? He means the murder weapon. Larry, did you forget? There are two layers of suspicion hanging over your head. That's exactly what I meant. We can't only rely on the words of a suspect, after all. We may have figured out where he was and what he was doing all night. But the bloodstained samurai sword that was left at the crime scene. As long as there's no satisfactory explanation for that, this wolf will refuse to ease up on his bite. Eek. Edgy, that guy. He looks like he's serious about taking a bite out of me. 
I'm well aware. And you should be as well, that this upcoming battle will be crucial. Thanks for the cooperation of our lovely Bumbler. I've been dealt a very nice hand in a sweet trump card. Looks like we're about to enter the final bout. Now, Mr. Prosecutor, let's see what you've got. I can easily point out the contradiction in the supposed murder weapon, but the real problem for me is figuring out what the real murder weapon is. This will be a high-stakes gamble, but this is one game I can't afford to lose. Why, Larry? I was the one who found the body of the victim, Damask II. Besides him was the samurai sword, uh, beside him was the samurai sword, glittering red and offering up the scent of blood. It was supposed to be in the steel samurai's dressing room, but I found it here instead. Plus, I found the murder weapon's owner, the suspect Larry Butts, in here too. Isn't it a bit far-fetched to accuse someone simply on the basis of ownership? But this owner wanted to sneak onto the crime scene. I think that's plenty to go on, don't you? If you're alluding to his reason for being by the chimney, we've already established that. Hold on there, Mr. Prosecutor. You two are longtime friends, right? Who's to say you didn't fabricate the evidence to give him an alibi? You're accusing me of fabricating evidence? You think I can believe anything you produce? Forging evidence is all you prosecutors do. This man has some serious issue with prosecutors. But come on, I can't think of something as complicated as that, right, Edgy? Larry, I can agree because I know you and your personality well. However, Agent Lang knows nothing about you, or me for that matter. I sense his hatred for my entire profession emanating from his entire being. Meaning that the only way I can prove Larry's innocence is to present irrefutable evidence. You were the one that found him, sure. I mean, the, the blade is there. Also true. I mean, that's why he's being held here, yeah. What do I... I don't know what I present or press. I'm gonna press everything and see what my dude says. So you were the first to discover the body this time. This time? What's that supposed to mean? You better watch what you say. I only said this time because earlier Kay was the first to discover the body in the ball. And your secretary, Agent Sheena, was ready to accuse her of murder for that. Ha! Huh. So are you going to use that excuse to call me suspicious now? Of course not. I was simply pointing out the usual pattern with discoveries of bodies. But in the Babalese case, there was proof that she was holding the weapon, right? Well, in this one, it's a bit different, since we know exactly where the weapon is. Okay, so that one I don't think I need to do anything with. Hold it! Excuse me, but glittering red and offering up the scent of blood? Do I have to spell it out for you? I mean the sight and smell of blood, of course. And according to the tests, the blood on the sword belongs to the victim. The sword was made to only be used on stage, so it's not sharp. But it is pretty weightly. It's certainly heavy enough to beat someone to uh, beat someone to death with it. Which leads me to suspect that the victim was beaten to death with the sword. Hmm. If the sword is made out of the same material as the spear, because the spear couldn't even damage a wall. Like, Larry said that, like, he swung, hit the wall, and the spear bent, like, didn't even damage the wall. Beaten to death, huh? This last statement, of, yeah, I think that's what I'm supposed to, okay. Uh, oop. Where's the spear? Yeah, it's hollow. Objection! Do you know what this is, Agent Lang? Heh, <laughs> it's a long spear, right? We used to use those a lot in my country a long time ago. 
piercing, mowing down people, spears are the weapon of heroes throughout history. It's the next most efficient weapon after the whip. I think the whip is in a slightly different category. So what's your point? Are you going to tell me that the spear is the real weapon? No, I simply want you to take a look at this section here. The way it's bent? Precisely. Apparently, a certain troublemaker hit it against a wall in this embassy earlier. And as you can clearly see, the insides of the Steel Samurai's weapons are hollow. In other words, they're replicas that aren't strong enough to deliver a damaging blow. Let alone the multiple strikes necessary to bludgeon someone to death. And yet, there's not even a dent in the Samurai Sword. How do you explain that? Aye! Oh uh, yeah, the sword and the spear are made of the same stuff, so they bend easily. But I wish they'd make them out of better stuff, because the spear got bent. I wasn't able to do my special early summer rain jab move. Man, I got such an earful from the director when it, for of the play for not doing it in the show. The Steel Samurai's move was changed tonight because of him? <laughs> I like that that's... okay. <laughs> Ouch! That's more than enough of your whiny whimpering. Now, back on the topic of the spear. Yes, let's return to the real topic of discussion. This is where the real gamble begins. I don't have a real strategy, per se. So all I can do now is let the chips fall where they may. Using guesswork and taking risks in place of real logic is hardly the Von Karma way. If neither smart nor very clever. Ms. Von Karma, as you know, unlike your father, I am not a genius prosecutor. Plus, I doubt his record of a 40-year win streak will ever be broken. Well, perhaps it is for the best if it remains unbroken. For no one should have conceived of the notion of, to convict all defendants in the first place. What a foolishly foolish statement from a foolish fool who hates to lose. It's the job of a prosecutor to make sure that all defendants are found guilty in court. There is nothing more important in this world than a perfect victory. That may be your opinion, however, I don't believe that's all we are. Nani? As a prosecutor, what I pursue is not the perfect victory, but the perfect truth. And if that means that the bridge I must cross will crumble beneath my feet, then let it crumble as I walk on towards the truth. You're good at keeping me entertained, Mr. Prosecutor. But you know, humans are delicate creatures. The slightest bump and we expire. I'd like you to consider, if you will, the possibility that the sword was used in such a way that the attack killed the Mass 2 without bending it. So what do you think of my hypothetical scenario? I think you know what to do here, right? And what you need. Of course. What I need is evidence even he can't refute. This is it. It's time to bring this to a close. Why, Larry, part two. It's possible to use the Steel Samurai Sword to kill people. And under these circumstances, it's the only logical conclusion. We search the embassy top to bottom, but the victim's blood is only on that weapon. So is it only natural that suspicion would fall onto the owner of said weapon? Uh... Let's see. As long as I want, because we examined every corner within these walls of the embassy, there's no stone we've left unturned. And we've managed to come up with only one logical conclusion, that the only piece inside of the embassy with the victim's blood on it is the sea. You left no stone unturned. Is that, the, is that a fact? If you've got something to say, then say it in the only way I respect, Mr. Prosecutor. Yes, of course. In that case, allow me to make it all crystal clear for you. I mean, that's true. Under the current circumstances, I guess I agree. Search the embassy top to bottom. Alright. Time to press everything because I do not know. Thankfully, the game usually tells you when you're like, What's wrong with this statement? Da, da, da. May I inquire as to how you were able to make such claim, Agent Lang? Agent Lang says, 
capable of miracles beyond comprehension. A mysterious creature is man. Rather than man, it's Agent Lang's quotes that are getting increasingly incomprehensible. The human body is a mysterious thing, even with a toy-like sword. It's easy to kill a man if you hit just the right spot. Which is why I think it's possible to, to kill with this thing without leaving a dent. Hold it! But we can only be sure one way or the other by seeing if the wound matches the sword. Hm, I know that. But as long as it's possible, I can proclaim it as much as I like. Fair. In the circumstances, the only logical conclusion... There's nothing really to press there. Uh... Hold it! The only place where you could find blood was on the samurai sword. That's right. Even with luminol. Which means that there are no other possibilities outside of what I've already outlined. Do I have a problem with Le with Legion? Uh... If you believe that there is no other door possibility left to open, then allow me to force one open for you. And how do you plan to do that? By showing you what may possibly be the real murder weapon. Uh... Ha 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 ha! The real murder weapon? I hate to repeat myself, but my men have already searched every last inch of this embassy, and they've concluded that nothing else could have been used as the weapon. Knowing these facts, do you still want to press forward with your little hypothesis? Of course. Because it's not possible that your men inspected everything in their investigation. What are you talking about? I don't appreciate mind games, and I don't appreciate it when people like you slander my men. Hold it! I think I know where we're going with this. The statue. I just remembered that the statue was turned, because here, it's facing, like, let's say the fourth wall of south. Right now, the statue's facing south. Uh, I'm not slandering them, I assure you. I'm merely pointing out that their investigation dragon has a few holes in it. No, no, that there is something that you're met. Yeah, because they wouldn't have touched the statue. And that item is the real murder weapon, and then right there, in the photo behind him, the statue's facing west. Alright, I'll play her on for now. This real weapon that killed the mask too. What exactly is it? The real murder weapon, which not a single person has yet to touch, is this one. Wait, hold on, I have two of these. That's the Babal one. That one. Take that! The National Treasure of Alabast. You mean the Permaduck statue? Yes, and as you know, only the ambassador and his secretary his secretariat may touch it. Which I believe means that neither you nor your men were able to examine it, correct? Ha 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 ha! You know very well that if we did that, there'd be an international incident between the Kingdom of Alabast and the Republic of Babal. The two countries' pre uh, precarious relationship teeters in the balance over a stupid fight related to a sovereignty st statue. But I'll be damned if I let something go unexamined. Hold it! Agent Lang, if you could take a look at this. The direction the statue is facing just before and after the crime are different. Now, there's only one conclusion I can draw from that. Go look for Ambassador Alba and, give, and get him to give us the okay to examine the statue. Shifu, you can't listen to this infidel's words. He is most definitely trying to trick you. Shifu, please, let's be rational about this. Grrr. Langji says, Just go already. <laughs> yes, sir. Shifu, yeah? I'm really sorry, sir, but I was unable to convince the ambassador. I was unable to obtain permission for us to examine the Primaduck statue. Hmm, I see. Wait. But then the investigation is at a standstill. Agent Lang, I will go and speak with the ambassador personally. Save your breath, he may act all weak and frail, but that old man's one tough cookie. But I guess you've got to be tough when you're representing a whole country, you know. Agent Lang. What do you want? Let's just hurry up and examine the statue already. W but Shifu, what about causing an international incident? Quiet. 
I'll take the fall if I have to later. Hold it. Agent Lang, the hypothesis is mine. So if someone is to take responsibility, let it be me. Responsibility? If we're gonna talk in such heavy terms, maybe I should should let you. It'd be a real problem for my men if something were to happen to me. Alright then. Less talk, more investigation. If you want to know the truth, we can't stop here. Action must be taken. Agent Lang, I'd like to run a luminol... chemiluminescence test on the statue. A luminol test? Ah, good thinking. If the statue is the murder weapon, then some of the victim's blood should be on it. Okay, let's get the forensic team in here. Heh, <laughs> looks like you hit the jackpot, Mr. Prosecutor. I guess this means that this is the real weapon that killed Damask 2. Indeed. But I wouldn't celebrate it yet if I were you. This doesn't let your friend off the hook. It doesn't prove that he didn't kill Damask 2, so the charge remains. We are hardly done examining the statue, Agent Lang. Knowing that it is the real weapon, I believe further examination is required. Heh, you think so? Okay then, knock yourselves out. Uh... Zoom in. With the sword drawn and ready, there is a certain aura of valor around him. Lang Ji says, those who hold a sword hold an equally strong will. It's said that the weapon one holds reflects the strength and will of one's character. I wonder if this was created as a show of that country's majesty. Uh, what does Franzi's whip say about her character? It says that I'm ready to exact punishment on those who would break the law. Why are you glaring at me? I thought you understood I'm not the killer. I believe in your case. She wishes to exact punishment before anything else happens. Hmm, upon closer inspection, he really does look a lot like the Steel Samurai. Maybe that's- hey, maybe that's why they chose him to be the Goodwill Ambassador. I actually can't discredit that hypothesis. Or maybe the people at this embassy just really like the Steel Samurai. That's absolutely preposterous. I don't think it's that unlikely. We mustn't go around denouncing people's opinions. And yet, look how easily you discredited mine. Not that I care why they chose him. There's a shield on his back, and I wonder if that's supposed to mean that his back is covered. Lang Ji says, those with a shield on their back deflect all enemies behind them. It means that he is ready for any blindside attack that may come his way. Agent Lang, there's no need to attach overly complex meanings to such simple things. Ha! You didn't seem to get Lang Ji's saying, so I was just explaining it to you. The saying itself is what I was referring to when I said overly compl complex. Hey, I got a Jiva. We're examining both the sword and statue, Lang Ji says. Uh, anything else? Oh, hello. Yeah. And what do we have here? This dirty smudge looks like a handprint. Hey, 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 ha, ha, ha! What's a definitive bit of evidence like you doing under here? Looks like we've got some fingerprints to analyze. Worst case scenario, these prints belong to Larry. But it looks like it's too late for me to do anything about that now. Hey, friends of guy, I want results on these fingerprints ASAP, you hear me? Agent Lang, I have the analysis results, sir. Good, and? Sir, about the prints we lifted from the bottom of the statue. Well, um... You know the victim of the murder in the Babalese Embassy? The prints belong to him, to Ma Mr. Manny Cochin, sir. But that's... What's going on around here? No, that's impossible. Each primitive statue can only be handled by someone of that country. Oh, did the statue get swapped? But by the very fact that Mr. Cochin's fingerprints are on this one, it leads me to only one conclusion. This statue is actually Babal's Permaduck statue. Impossible, it can't be. Aya! Larry never once set foot on Babali's soil, so he was free to go. However, this new piece of information only served to confuse us even further. 
The ringleader of a smuggling operation was killed with an Alabastian knife in Baval. And Damas II was killed on Alabastian soil with Baval's national treasure. And then the mystic mystery of the great thief Yadagorasu who visited both countries. The pieces were there, but I had yet to see the big picture they were to form. To be continued. Da -da 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 -da. Save. Yes. Over it. Alright, well we will continue this next time. Bye bye.